cleaning. I think I'm going to be lying in a second. Hey everybody, welcome to FabFit Friday and part two of the bathroom sew along. Um, I'm really excited. I actually gave my mom her bathrobe that I made using that purple uh, waffle weave fabric um, this week, and she really likes it. Um, let me just see here. Hold on one second. I was conflicted because I thought maybe I needed to save it, you know, not give it to her so I could keep it to show you guys stuff, but I decided that you know, as we work along with the current bathrobe, I think that'll be okay. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm just going to check in here. Um, hi PG, welcome. Um, I hope you're safe and sound. It's a dismal, dreary, rainy day here in Connecticut. Um, I actually went for a hike with the dogs. I felt like I was in Narnia because the fog was really thick and it was drizzling but I'm kind of glad I got out there this morning because I don't think I'd want to get out like later on I think I'm going to be all done but um, I'm glad I got some fresh air even though it's yucky out all right so um, hi Diane um, Diane says excited for the sew along but also excited because my Aliso mini project iron is on the way to you oh that's so exciting i'm so happy that you got one of those do you know what color you picked out or did you get to pick out a color for your mini iron hi andrea welcome oh pg um oh i'm so happy it's sunny after after the rain from the storm i'm glad it didn't hit florida too um hi mary Hi EA, welcome, welcome ladies. Um, I'm really excited for my little sew along. Um, I decided what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by showing you a different pocket idea. This pocket is a lined pocket that has a sort of a self binding on top that you line the pocket and create a binding at the top of the edge all in one step. So that's the first thing I'm gonna be showing you. Hi Sally. Oh, you ordered some burgundy cotton linen waffle print for your bathrobe? That's exciting. I can tell you, I really was concerned that that fabric was not going to be comfortable, you know, for my mom, but it she loves it. And I washed it a couple more times after I finished putting it together and it did soften up and you know, she really likes it and it fits her and like my dad's happy, so I think the waffle weave fabric is a good choice. Um, in this current, uh, if you remember from last week, I'm using like a very firm knit. And so I interface some of the pieces. So why don't I start out by showing you that first, what I interfaced and what I didn't. And then I wanna show you how to make this really cool pocket idea. Um, hi, Nil Nilgun, welcome. From Istanbul, I love that, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I am so excited that I can reach around the world. I mean, I'm excited for all my wonderful friends in America, in the United States, but it is kind of exciting to think that, like, people are watching me from other countries, too. Um, that's exciting. And I know you've got your bathroom, but I have, Nilgun, if you had any trouble putting it together, please let me know, you know, and I'll help you. Um, all right, let's get started. I'm going to get started by showing you what I interfaced and what I didn't interface. And let me just switch my view. Um, hi, Linda. Hi from Texas. You're new to the channel and you're not sewing right now, but you, I have some nice techniques. Oh, thank you so much. You don't, sewing is not required. You can just watch me um, if you want to, and then maybe you'll be inspired to, you know, maybe so something later, but thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, oh, Sally dreams to visit Istanbul. So wonderful to be on a sew along with someone from there. 
oh, it's so exciting. Um, and really, I, you know, I know where some of you guys are from, and it really is so inspiring, and just, I feel honored that you take the time to watch my, my FabFit Friday, so thank you. All right, so I am going to switch over to my picture in picture, and I'm going to make it bigger. Make me laugh today. Um, all right, she's studying for her master's degree. Um, she doesn't have internet in her room, so she has to be in my room. But she has noise canceling headphones on. All right, we're not going to talk about you anymore. <laughs> all right. Um, hi, Terry from Nebraska. Thank you for catching me live. Oh, Diane says hi, Anna. Diane said hi. Hello, everyone. <laughs> All right. Okay, so let me show you what I've interfaced. This is a little bit messy. Um, all right, so I interfaced the facing pieces. So this is the back facing. I interfaced that. I interfaced the front um front facing pieces now i will tell you on the waffle fabric i did not um interface anything on the waffle fabric and i didn't interface my flannel either because it was pretty stable so you may not need to interface your pieces if you're working with a stable knit i recommend interfacing because it's going to keep it from stretching so in addition to my facing pieces I also interfaced all the hem edges with an inch wide strip of um, interfacing. And this interfacing is a lightweight interfacing. And my friend Gail at Gail Patrice Designs sells it. It's called Denny Fuse. It's very sheer and it's really nice just to give your fabric some support without adding bulk. So after I'm done with this live stream, what I'll do is I'll put a link to her store. So if you want to get some of this lovely lightweight um, interfacing, you can. But you can see it's it's sheer. See how sheer it is? You know, it has a little bit of give to it. It's not stretchy. Well, actually, it doesn't have give. Um, it has a little, a tiny bit of cross grain give. The vertical, there is no give. Okay, so this is a nice lightweight fusible interfacing if you need something that just has a little bit of stability. And I, like I said, I'll put the link um, to Gail's website after I'm done. Um, oh, PG says hi too. Oh, she can't hear me because she has her, her noise canceling um, things on. I'll tell her you said hi after PG. Um, oh, Terry wants to know if this is like Trico. Um, it's, it, I don't think it stretches as much as like a fusing, when I, when you say Trico, I'm thinking fusing knit. Um, it doesn't have as much stretch as like a fusing knit. It's just very lightweight and nice interfacing to use for something like this double, uh, knit that I'm working with. Um, but if you're working with stable woven fabrics, you probably don't need to interface it unless they're really lightweight. Um, oh, hi, Meg Sews. Oh, you received your pattern today. Oh, perfect timing. Um, all right, so um, I did that to all the hem edges too, okay? And then since I was on a kick to just use this interfacing, I cut um, 3 8 inch strips of it and used it on the shoulders as well. So I fused all my edges that are going to be hemmed and the sh and the shoulder um, seam edges. All right, so that's that's what I interfaced. Um, oh, I also interfaced the whole entire pocket because it's going to be lined, and I just figured if it was interfaced, then it wouldn't bag out. Like if you know there's stuff in well, my mom's tissues. She's going to use it for tissues, but um, I did interface the pocket, but I did not interface the pocket lining. So I cut out. Um, 
you know, a pocket lining and a pocket, and I'll, I'll talk about these in a minute, but let me just um, finish up with the interfacing. So if anybody has any questions about what to interface or if their fabric needs to be interfaced, please let me know. Um, and I'm just gonna put all this stuff aside and I'm gonna show you how to do the pocket first. Just because it's kind of a cool technique. All right, hold on one second. Let's see here. Okay. All right. So the first thing is with the pocket pieces, this is the pocket piece in the pattern. You can certainly customize this to be um, whatever size you want. Um, and of course, depending on how you sew it, you can make it smaller. I was kind of shocked how small this pocket ended up after I sewed it because I used a half an inch seam allowance. But what I want to show you here is look at how it's got a sort of a self bound edge up at the top okay and then the back is I cut the I cut the lining um, on the on the bias so that's how it looks on that side and you'll notice there's a little hole here and that's where I turned it to the right side so instead of leaving um, an opening on the edge which you totally can do if you want to I cut a hole here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of interfacing and I'm going to just sort of use it as a band-aid for this hole okay and the nice thing is um, I did it way at the bottom so it's not going to be noticeable when you're wearing it okay you're never going to know this hole is here and then it allows you to have like a nice crisp edge all the way around your pocket. So if you ever have trouble getting your seam allowances to match up after you, um, you know, leave a hole in the side edge, try this and then you won't have to fight with it. So just to keep it safe, I'm going to fuse. Now when you fuse interfacing, this is also going to be my mini of uh, how to, um, how to fuse interfacing. You never want to rub the iron back and forth when you're fusing your interfacing. You just want to hold it down and pat, you know, and if you need to put steam, you know, do a little steam. But basically, that's how you would do interfacing even if it was a big piece of interfacing. So that's like my mini little interfacing. Okay, so see you've got, now the hole is patched at the bottom and by the time I top stitch this, this in place, it's not going to be noticeable at the bottom of the pocket. Um, Diane says, Jen, sorry, i forgotten what fabric you are working with now. Um, this is a sort of a double knit. It's almost like a ponte knit that I got from um, L.A. Finch Fabric. They tempted me with all of their Instagram posts. I'll be honest, I've been following them on Instagram and I bought a bunch of other things too. Um, but this is really nice and soft. You know, I just felt like it needed a little stability. Oh, Nilgun's going to use contrasting fabric for the pockets. That's a nice idea. Um, introducing another fabric for the pockets is a great idea. And actually, I threw away all of the scraps when I made my mom's waffle weave bathrobe. So I may be on the lookout for something that will coordinate with that to make her pockets because she did comment that there were no pockets on her her bathrobe. So that was my boo-boo because I threw away in my tidy, I had like this snap tidy session where I just cleaned my studio and I threw away all my scraps from the bathrobe and I forgot that I needed some to make pockets. So anyway, all right, I want to explain to you how to make this type of a pocket where you end up creating a, it looks like a bound edge up at the top at the same time you're finishing it um, with, a, with a lining. So let me show you how to prep your pieces for that. All right, so what you need to do is you need to cut out your pocket. And last week I said that 
if you're not going to just turn the, the edge under, you know, hem it, and you're going to make a lining, um, I got rid of this, you know, and I cut it out like this. So I cut out my pocket like this with this hem allowance um, face down or out of the way. Then when I cut out my lining, I cut it out with the hem allowance face up. And what you need to figure here for your um, your bound edge or your top edge, you need double whatever this whatever this um, amount that you sew the lining to the top is. You need double that length to create the um, this bound edge because it's it's under here and then it goes back. So you're going to sew it on right sides together, and then we're going to fold it up. And so around the edge, so it's doubled up here. So you need two times the length of this edge to create this all in one step. So this is an inch and a quarter. So I know if I sew, um, if I sewed it along the top at five eighths of an inch, which is half of an inch and a quarter, that would work. So if you want to make the side pocket in the pattern, cut out one with this, you know with this piece on, fold it down and cut out your pocket for the for the actual pocket piece. So the lining gets the extra, the pocket gets it gets it folded down. And you can customize the width of this. You know, if you just want, all right, I'm just checking to make sure we have no more comments. All right. So now let's go to sewing this. I'm going to drag my sewing machine over here. All right, let me just fix my view for one second here. All right, so the first step is we are gonna take the pocket and the pocket lining and we're gonna line them up on that top edge. Okay, and here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna sew along the top edge using a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, and I'm just going to go just right across the top. Okay. Now, here's how we create the, here's what we're gonna do to create the actual pleat. I'm gonna press this up, I'm just gonna finger press it up, and then I'm gonna fold it back down on itself so that that top fold is even with the top of the pocket. So see, I folded it up and then back down, and so I've got both of my seam allowances and the folded fabric there. And I think what I'll do is I'll just put, um, I'll just put a couple pins just to hold it. Oh, actually, I'm in love with my mini, my mini Wonder Clips here. So let me just use Wonder Clips because they're just so easy to work with. I'm just gonna do two clips, okay? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew, you know, around the edge. Okay, so you can sew around the edge using a quarter inch, um, half inch, whatever, but you'll see that folding it here actually makes the rest of it match up. Okay, so all the edges match up because the extra length is now folded up here. So I am going to sew down. making sure everything's lining up. And I'm just gonna go right around the edge. And then I'm gonna come right up the other side. And actually what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna flip this over so that 
the feed dogs will take up this extra knit I have because it's stretching out. So that's one of the things about sewing um, a knit to a non-knit. Let me just do it this way now. And I'm just going to even this out here. Okay. I'm just going to go around again a little bit here. Oops. All right. Then what I'm going to do is I am going to trim this to a quarter of an inch. Hold on one second. All right, so let me just see here. I'm just going to trim all the way around to like even almost an eighth of an inch actually because I need to get rid of all of this bulk. I'm going to trim... And on this one, when I did my first pocket, when I was testing this, nothing stretched, but this, this one stretched a little bit, but it'll be okay. Let me just show you. All right, so I've got it like that. Now I'm just gonna show you, here is, see where my extra fabric is right here. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create that little hole in my lining. Make sure you, if you're gonna cut a hole, Make sure you cut on the lining side so you're not cutting the outside of your pocket. So again, we're just going to have this be way down towards the bottom. And it really doesn't need to be that big. Okay. And now I'm going to just turn this to the right side. And I can get away with a tiny hole because I'm working with a knit fabric. I'm just going to smooth it out around the edges. And see, so up at the top, what you're doing is you're poking it up straight. And see, it creates that sort of self-binding. All right, so it makes this nice pocket. Um, I can use my little wooden thing to smooth out the curves. Okay. So like even though I didn't sew that perfectly well, you know, it still looks pretty good. Okay. So then we're just going to give this some steam. Okay, and then I've got a nifty pocket. All right, and then we have to put the, the interfacing on the hole, but I'll do that later. Um, but basically, that's how you make your self-bound, self, you know, sort of a self-bound edge to your pocket. All right? And again, you can customize it and make it any width you want. Just know you need to add double the length of your actual pocket piece um, to make that work. Okay, so that's the only math you have to figure out is how wide you want this to be and then double it and add it to the top edge of the pattern before you cut it out. All right, so I'm going to put these pockets aside because we're not going to need these actually till the last class now. Um, we'll put the pockets on and we're going to do the hem, the pockets, um, the buttonholes will all be in the last class. So I'm going to save those for later. And oops. the next thing we're going to work on is our facings. And I'm going to have my, my back facing and my front facings. Okay, so I've got my facings. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to put our back facing right side up on the table, like this. And then I'm going to match my uh, shoulder edges, you know, right sides together. 
um, on these facings. And I'm going to sew these shoulder seams. And then after I do that, I'm also going to sew the shoulder seams on the bathrobe itself. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually finish the entire front edge with the facings before... Um, I mean, that's going to be the first steps. So, like, before we put the sleeves or anything on, we're going to finish the neckline and front edge with the facing. So we're going to need to cut, um, sew the shoulder seams on the facing to put that together and also on the bathrobe itself. Okay, so I've got my shoulder seams pinned or wonder clipped. Let me just see here. Um... Mary says, is the pocket top stitched on? If so, could you have left the opening for turning it somewhere on the seam? It, um, Mary, the, the, the um, pocket is going to be top stitched onto the front of the bathrobe, but depending on the fabric you're using, sometimes when you go to you know press that edge with those seam allowances where the opening is on the edge, um, it's hard to get them to lay exactly even and nice with each other. So it's just another option. You can absolutely leave a hole or an opening in the seam when you sew the lining to the, the pocket. But if you do, leave it on one of the sides because the side edge is where it's least likely to be noticeable. Um, you can absolutely um, leave a hole on the side edge. I just wanted to give you another option. And I actually showed that in my pants fitting class last night for back patch pockets. And, um, you know, it just makes it easier to get it on there neatly. Okay. So now I'm going to drag my machine back in. And I'm going to sew my shoulder seams using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So I'm going to do both of these shoulder seams. It's funny, these Wonder Clips sat in the bowl. I bought them, I ordered them from Wawa when I had a big order of a bunch of other things. And they, I found a nice little bowl to put them in. And they literally sat there for a couple weeks. I didn't use them at all because I just I wasn't sure about them because I've never had Wonder Clips before. But then when I started using them to hold stuff together, I realized how um, easy they are to work with and how nice they are to work with because you can pick things up and put them down and the pins don't fall, you know, they don't fall out like pins do sometimes. So now I'm in love with Wonder Clips. Okay, so let me just get my other bathrobe pieces here. So I'm going to stitch my fronts and backs together and I can tell what my fronts and backs are because I've got um, I've got the the tape on the shoulder seam so what I'll do is I'll put the fronts down face up so here's one front oh actually you know what before Okay, I'm going to change my mind on that. We're not going to do the shoulder seams yet. I want to sew the center back seam first. And because I'm working with knit, I'm going to go back and forth between my sewing machine and my serger. So to sew the center back seam, I'm going to use the serger. Okay, so let me just get that. I have it all set up and ready to go. Okay, so my dream is to have a studio sewing spot where I can have my sewing machine and my serger up on the table at the same time. Until then, we're going to have to um, make this a little bit wide here for a second. I'm going to have to switch them around. All right, so the center back seam is a you know it's obviously it's a long seam it goes from the base of the neck 
um, down to the hem. And we wanna make sure that when we sew this, it doesn't stretch. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put right sides together and I'm gonna use my Wonder Clips to hold the edges together here. So I'm just gonna do the bottom and the top and maybe a couple in the middle because I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that it's evenly, you know, you have to manage your fabric when you're working on a long seam. So I'm just gonna lay this down. This fabric curls to the right side, which is just a fun fact, I guess. So I'm just gonna make sure it's not curling. I'm just gonna put in a few pins here or wonder clips. And before we start stitching our center back seam, I am going to test my, my serger to make sure I don't need to adjust my differential feed. I'm guessing it's gonna have to be just on the neutral setting because there's not a lot of vertical stretch in this fabric. But anytime you use your, your serger to sew a seam, it's a really good idea to check it to make sure it's stitching the way you like. So let me just grab a scrap. So the other thing about testing your fabric is you want to make sure you test it in the direction that you're going to be sewing your seam. So you can see my, my fabric is um, striped, so I want to actually test it along the vertical stripes because that's the way my um, fabric is going on my garment. So I'm just going to have it be on neutral. Let's just see how it looks. So I think that's a nice flat seam. So see how it's not stretched out at all? It's nice and flat. So I don't need to make a differential feed setting adjustment. Um, if you're working with a woven fabric that does not stretch, I would clean finish all the edges like I showed in, the, in part one so you don't have to go back and forth. But because this is a knit, you know, some seams I can just sew on the serger, so I am going to flip back and forth for this. But, um, you know, it just depends on what your fabric is. Okay, so I'm going to sew my, my center back seam. I'm not trimming anything off. Um, well, actually, I should be trimming off about an eighth of an inch because the bathrobe has a half an inch seam allowance. So I do need to trim off an eighth of an inch because my seam width is 3 eighths. So I just need to skim a little bit off as I go. Which, um, where's my tweezers? I just wanna grab with my tweezers. Of course, I don't know where my tweezers went. All right, sometimes when I start, the edge, my knife is a little dull, I think, so I just want to grab this right here. Okay. All right, so see, I'm trimming off this little eighth of an inch, okay, because the seam allowance is a half an inch. So I'm just holding this tail here. So I'm just going to carefully work down as I go, and I'm making sure the edges are not um, curled as I stitch. So between each um, wonder clip that I take out, I'm just uncurling the edge and making sure it's laying flat and even. Oops! 
get over here. All right, I'm almost at the bottom. All right, when you get to the bottom, you'll see I have that um, the fusible tape on the hem. Okay, so I've got my center back seam sewn, and now we're going to press it. Pressing really makes a big difference on how your finished garment is going to look. And I'm just going to put this down on the floor. And I'm going to put this up here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay it flat and I'm just going to give it some steam okay so I'm just steaming my center back seam and then I'm going to press it open just see here um, oh Mary says how did your dog do being bred Going to have puppies? Ooh, um, we won't find out until the day before Thanksgiving. So our appointment's on the 24th, um, Wednesday the 24th, or maybe it's Tuesday. I don't know. It's in a, in a couple weeks. I can't tell because she really isn't getting fluffy or, or big, but her, her mom didn't either, so we'll see. I'm kind of excited. I hope she's going to have puppies. I don't know. We'll see. All right, so let me just finish. Okay, so you can see here, I think you can see the slight curve to the back from when I from the high round adjustment that's included in this pattern that I left for my mom. All right, so now I'm going to just open it up. And for the top, because I have that slight curve, I'm going to put my ham underneath it. Okay, and I'm just going to give it a, just a nice, some nice steam all the way down. I can press it flat once I get past the curved um, high round adjustment. Um, all right, so now that I did that, I can just, you know press it flat and I'm just pressing the seam allowance in one direction if you're working with a heavier woven fabric like a waffle fabric I would press this center this seam open okay so it just really again depends on your fabric and okay so I'm just gonna just feeling underneath to make sure it's laying the right way I'm just going to give this some nice steam. Okay. Alright, so that takes care of our center back seam. And from the right side, it, it's just going to look like this. I mean, from the wrong inside, it's just going to be like that. Um, you know, we could top stitch that down. Um, but I think for now, I'm just gonna leave it. I think that'll be okay like that. So that's our center back seam. Now we're gonna sew our shoulder seams. So I'm gonna get my fronts over here. And I'll just put my back right side face up. Okay. And then I'll take my front pieces and I'll put those right sides together with the back and again I'm just going to use my my wonder clips 
Now for the shoulder seams, I'm going to sew those on the sewing machine because I want to be able to press these open because remember we're going to have um, where the facing is, there's going to be a double layer of seam allowances because there's seam allowances for the facing at the shoulder and there's also seam allowance for the for the bathroom itself. So let me just we're going to go to the sewing machine this time and I'm going to sew these together. Okay, so I've got them pinned. So I'll just put this away for a second. Okay. All right, so I'm going to sew, um, again, 3 8 inch seam allowance, which is going to catch me right on the end of my tape here. I probably should have made my tape a little bit wider. All right. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press these seams open. I think. Let me just look at it here. Oops. Um. So if I press it open, um, let me just see, you know, actually, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to press it open to keep it less bulky. You have another option. You can press the um, bathrobe shoulder seams um, to the back and then press the facing shoulder seams open. You could do that too. So I guess, you know, it depends on your fabric, how thick it is, but I'm just gonna press these open. Only a small amount of this sh shoulder seam is gonna show because the facing is going to go on there next. So what we're going to do is let me just press the seam allowances of my facing open as well. So now we're going to pin the facing to the neckline and front edge. So let me just make, make sure you can see what I'm doing. Let me just lay this like this. Okay, now I've got this. Let me just make it a little bit bigger so you can see. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to take my facing and I'm going to put it right sides together with the neckline. I'm going to match my shoulders. Okay, so here's my shoulder seams. I'm going to match those. Um, 
All right, so again, let me just switch gears here for a second. Before I do that, there is one edge I want to finish on the serger. Actually, um, sorry about that. I forgot that after I sewed my shoulder seams on my facing, I want to finish the outer edge of the facing on the serger. So it's finished. So I'm going to start over here. And I'm just going to I'm just going to use the four thread. And I'm not going to trim anything off. You can see as I'm finishing this outer edge, I'm also um, making sure my seam allowances are, you know, pressed open on the edge here. This is a step that would have been done already if I had been working with woven fabric because I would have finished all my edges before I started sewing. So I forgot to do that, so I apologize. All right, let me go back over here now. All right, so again, we're gonna pin our facing right sides together with the neckline edge. So I'm going to start at my back and I'm putting this right sides together and I'm going to match up my shoulders here. I'm going to pin those. And then I'm just going to you know, pin the neck back neckline on to the, you know, the back facing onto the back neckline. And I'll pin it at the center back. See, I have this giant, I have a giant bowl of clips. Oops. Okay. All right, so I'm just making sure that all fits. That's good. Then I'm going to come down my front neckline to the notch at the um, center front of the collar here. Well, it's not really a collar. It's where the neckline is going to be. That's like the little notch in the front. So let me just pin that. Okay, now we're going to pin down the length of our bathrobe. going to pin this. All the way down one to one. You know, I'm being careful not to stretch my edges because again this is knit. Hmm. 
All right, so I can see here, and since we're live, you're gonna find this out with me. For some reason, my facing is shorter. <coughs> Excuse me. For some reason, my facing is shorter <coughs> than my hem by a good inch and a little bit. And I honestly don't know how that happened. Um, that is a mistake. <coughs> Excuse me. So, my only option now is to trim this to match. Um, and I'm pretty sure... Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. <coughs> I mean, I'm fairly certain that the pattern pieces matched meaning the length of my center front was the same as the front facing um, because when I made the first one, it matched up. So I don't know what happened. Maybe I trimmed off some of my pattern piece. I'm going to have to go back and check my paper. But the good news is, the good news for me is if I make this a little shorter, that's not going to affect um, the fit for my mother because she's a pretty short lady. So really making it a little like an inch and a little bit shorter is not going to matter so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin on the other side and then I'm going to sew it and then I'm just going to check the side seams and make sure nothing else wonky happened this is one of those little sewing gremlins that sometimes happens um, of course when I was working on the purple bathrobe everything matched up perfectly so I don't know what happened but this is what happens on real live sewing. Sometimes there's little mistakes. Um, but we're just going to come up with a um, solution to fix it and move on. So let me just pin the front of this facing on to the, this front edge. I mean, if this one is just as short, then I know it's the pattern piece got trimmed somehow. Yeah. All right, so I guess that's the good news that both of my facings are the same because then I can just trim my bathrobe length to match. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Sew this, and I'm going to sew it on on the sewing machine. All right, so let's go back to the sewing machine. Um, Mary says that will make the hem not so bulky when you turn it up. I would leave it like that. Yeah, I was thinking that, Mary. Um, I was thinking maybe I would do that. We'll see. Let me just see what happens when I um, when I sew. Now I'm gonna sew from the center back down to the hem, and then I'm gonna sew it the other way too. And I no, actually, I'm gonna sew it from hem to hem because I want the uninterfaced part to be against the feed dogs. So it it'll help ease that in. And on my faf, I am going to engage my differential feed or my built-in walking foot. So I'm going to sew this using just the side of my presser foot as a guide. Here. See what I'm doing. Okay. All right, so I'm going to just sew this. You know, and I'm just making sure the 
the edges match as I go because the uninterfaced piece is curling a little bit. So I'm coming up to the neckline. And so when I get to here, I'm going to essentially, I'm just going to mark right here. So like it's going to be kind of a thing where I try to keep an even you know, seam allowance through that corner. So if you have a hard time with that, mark your corner. So now we're going to go around the neckline. I could probably clip this thread. All right, so I'm going across the center back. Around to the front. So again, I'm going to draw my little guideline here. I think visually that just helps me make sure I do a good pivot like that. Um, all right, so Lazarus says, I would first sew the bottom part of the facing to the bottom of the front piece without cutting it shorter. Hmm. All right, let me just see. We'll deal with that in a second. Hold on. Okay. All right, so now I'm just going to go down my opposite side here. Okay, I'm almost at the bottom. All right, 
so that's sewn on. The next step is going to be to understitch. Now, I can't understitch all the way because I've got those little notches up at the top, but what understitching does for you is it allows you to help the facing to stay on the inside of your garment. So I'm gonna start at the other side here and I am going to stitch through, I'm going to stitch through the facing and both seam allowances. Okay, so, and I'm going to go about an eighth of an inch from my seam. So I'm going to understitch up as far as I can. And as I go, I'm pulling the fabric away from each other this way, okay? Oops, I could feel my, see right there, I just felt the, um, the seam allowance flip to the other side, so I've going to catch that. You have to make sure that it's agreeing with the way you're sewing. So I sewed it. I think this is going to be one of these days where anything and everything that can go wrong is going to go wrong. But I'm going to embrace it and keep moving. All right, so let me get this back over here. I'm looking for some smaller scissors so I can clip it a little bit farther. Yeah, it started to fold in on itself. So you really have to use your fingers to feel and make sure that your um, seam allowance is laying flat as you stitch. So this kind of got away from me here. But luckily I caught it before I got too far. So let me just All right, let me start back here. And I'm gonna feel in there and make sure my seam allowance is on the right side. This step really helps make a nice front edge, so don't skip it. You know, and it doesn't matter whether you're using woven fabric or knit fabric here. Okay, so I'm gonna go as close to See, here's my notch right here, okay? So I'm gonna go as close to that as I can. All right, I think that's about as far as I dare. All right, so now I'm going to skip over the part that's notched, and I'm gonna continue around the front and back neckline. So again, I'm I'm just gonna understitch. Oops. Oh my gosh. Hold on. Make sure the seam allowance is going in the direction that you want it to. across the back neckline. Okay. 
across the other shoulder. And then I'm going to get as close to those front notches as I can. And I'm just going to stop right there. Okay, and then I'm going to start again below my front notches and just finish up this other side. I'm going to start right here. Alright, so I'm going down my last opposite side here. little stripe is kind of dizzying to work with. All right. Okay. We're all done understitching. Now I'm going to press the facing into place. Move that out of the way. surface here and I'll start I'm just gonna press it flat first you can see I'm uh, my my um, my under stitching made stretched out my edge a little bit here but I'm gonna steam it back into place and I need a little more water I love the filling, the water spout on this. It just goes right in nicely without dribbling. Oh, <laughs> of course I'm going to dribble. Oh, my God. <laughs> Please. All right. All right, that was not impressive. All right, let me just, <laughs> let me just flatten this out here. And then, of course, on the neckline, I don't want to squish it, so I'm going to use my. I'm just going to use my tip of my iron here along the back. All right, let me do my other side. Okay. So. Okay, almost done. All right. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is we need to treat our corners here um, to a little bit of a trim job. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually clip straight a diagonally across the outer points like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this edge to like, I don't know, like an eighth, maybe even a little bit less than an eighth of an inch in here. This is the little notch at the front of the neckline. All right, and then I'm just gonna clip into that corner just a little bit. All right, so that's how that looks. I'm gonna do that to the other side. Okay, so we're clipping straight across here and straight across here. 
Okay, and then I'm going to make this nice and skinny in here. Like that. And then I'm going to clip into the corner. Um, and then I think what I'm going to do for the neckline is I am going to just lay it down flat like this. And I'm just going to use my rotary cutter and I'm just going to trim around and, and just trim it all down to an eighth. careful not to cut the actual bathrobe here. We're just going to get rid of some of this bulk. <clears throat> it's tricky because I understitched. And I, I'm, you know, and sometimes I wonder if I should trim before I understitch. Um, Cuz it's hard to it's hard to trim your seam allowances after you understitch, but it's all right. All right, so all right, so that's all trimmed. So now I can turn this to the right side, and I'm just going to use something a little pokey to get in there and create nice points. Okay, so see. That looks nice. So let's do this other side here. All right, and now we can press this into position. Does anybody have any questions about anything at the moment? If you do, please let me know. And if if you're working on your bathrobe and you have questions while you're working on it, please feel free to email me at um, jsterndesigns37 at gmail and I will help you. Okay, so don't feel like you can't reach out and ask me questions. Um, all right, so I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the center back and do the neckline and I don't want it to be... Um, squished flat so I'm gonna press the back neckline and you can see I think you can see here that the understitching creates a situation where the facing stays um, on the wrong side of the garment see how nice that is like before I even put any seam on it okay so I'm gonna do that Then I'm going to come around and we'll do this front edge like this. And then once I get past this neckline portion, I can do it flat, but I like to have it on a sort of on a round surface. Um, to get the shape of the neckline nice. And I can clip this. See, I think that gives it a nice shape when you do it on a ham. Okay, so now we can finish pressing the edge. Okay, so I'm going to just lay it flat. And I'm rolling it back on itself so that the bathrobe fabric is, you know, just turning you know, right at the edge where that understitching is.
All right, let me just do the other side where I got it soaking wet. So now I've got my front edge all nice and pressed. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to serge together my side seams so I can see what I want to des decide to do about my little hem issue with it being longer than my facing. So let me just grab my serger. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put my bathrobe so it's right sides together and then I'm going to line up my underarm, you know, the side seams at the underarm. Okay, so my good news is my side seams from my hem to my sleeve actually um, match. So I know my problem is exclusively with my, um, it's exclusively with my facing piece. So I'm gonna stick this under here and I'm just gonna serge this. Now as I go, I'm just going to manage the fabric. I'm not pinning it together because what I'm going to do is I'm going to manage it as I go. So every few inches, I'm just going to line the two pieces up and make sure everything's matching. get close to the hem see I'll make sure these match all right so my hem edges match Let me do my opposite side seam. Okay, so again, here's my armhole. And I'm gonna I should put it wrong sides, right sides together. Actually, I almost put it wrong sides together. That would have been quite a thing. All right, so let me just sew this seam. And again, I'm gonna start at the top. do my side seams. All right, so what I'm thinking is the way I was going to finish the um 
the facing along that center front edge and the hem was like a button placket where you sew, you bring the facing to the right side of the garment, sew the bottom edge, and then cut off all the bulk. So that's why I'm trying to decide if I want to, you know, I still think I want to trim off the extra bathrobe length. Um, so I can show you how to do it that way because it makes a nice clean finish on your center front edge. Oh, I was so careful cutting out all the pieces I have no idea how my fixings got shorter. All right. Okay, so now let me put my serger down. And let's look at this. I'm going to fold my bathrobe in half from the center back. I'm going to line up the side seams. So this is this is my center back edge over here. Okay. This is my side seams and then here is my Here's my front that's too short. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is just see here. I'm just going to check this edge. Checking my front edge. All right, so this um, interfacing is extra, so I'm going to cut off that. So we don't need that to confuse the issue. All right, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim it even because I want to show you how I was going to finish it. But just because it's just because I have to um, shorten it here, I think I'm going to, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw myself a line like this. And I'm going to slowly blend me back into the original length. Because on my mom, it was a tad too, like it, it could have been a little bit longer at center back, so I don't want to trim anything off the center back. So I'm just going to do this. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut it off. Sure these are even before I cut. I'm just gonna put a couple clips there to make sure nothing's nothing um, shifts when I cut. So I'm just gonna cut this off. All right, I'm gonna go with this. Okay, so now my hem is even, and I know some of you voted for me not to do this, but here's why I wanted to do it. I'm gonna grab my sewing machine back. All right, so this is how I wanna finish the bottom edge of, um, the facing. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to finish the bottom edge. Then I'm going to sew the underarm seam of the sleeves. I'm going to set the sleeves in 
and that's going to be what we're doing for today. So I just want to show you this one little issue. Um, actually, it's already 2:30. Yeah, this is getting kind of long. Um, well, let me just see how let me just see how it goes here. So this is our bottom edge. Okay, so what I'm going to do, oh, first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my iron back up here, and I'm going to restore my, my fusible, um, my inch of um, tape that I cut off. Let's just put that back on. So, I'm just going to lay this on here like this and I'll cut it when I get um, over here where it blends back in okay so I'm just gonna fuse that back on now notice I am NOT rubbing okay Okay, so I am going to press my seam allowances to the back on the side seam. And I guess this tape will hold it that way, so that'll work out. So let me just press this. Okay, so that fixes my tape issue. And then I'll put some on this side too. Again, I'm going to press my side seam to the back. Okay. All right, so that fixes that issue. All right. Okay, so. All right, so I think I will save sleeves for next week because it's, I don't want to, you know, I hope nobody's falling asleep watching me. Um, I just want to show you this. To finish the bottom edge of this face, you know, the facing is obviously going to be in the back like this when it's done. But what we're going to do is we are actually going to press it to the front like this. And I am going to sew the inch. I'm going to sew it an inch here along this bottom edge okay all the way across all right and then this is where we're going to get rid of the bulk, and this is why I, you know, Mary made the suggestion of not trimming it and folding it up, because that would also, you could do it that way too. But what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to cut straight across, and I'm going to leave a little bit of this here. Okay, and actually I could probably cut this part off here. So now when I turn it to the right side, see what's gonna happen is now it'll be like that. So see how it, there really is no bulk and the, um, the surged edge will hide that. So that's how we're gonna finish the bottom edges of 
placket, okay? And that makes a nice, you know, bulk free edge. So our bottom edge of our, um, of our facing at the center front edge looks like that. Okay, so that's why I wanted it to be the same length so I could do that. So let me just show you one more time on this side. You fold your, your facing to the front. Okay, and then you sew an inch, and this way I'm gonna, I'm gonna go from the outside edge in this time. So I'm just gonna sew at an inch. cut off this right here, but I'm going to leave like a half an inch, you know, from the edge so it overlaps on the inside. And actually, like I said, we can cut this part off right here. Okay. So it looks like that. Then when we turn it, it looks like this. Okay. And there is no bulk and it makes a nice finish. All right, so um, that's how we're finishing the bottom. So I guess lesson learned, um, let's make sure that, um, you know, just double check all your pieces. Like before you cut out your front facing, just make sure it's the same length as the front facing of your um, bathrobe. And that way you won't have this problem that I had. So let's just review where we are here. I am going to press down, um, you know, I'll finish pressing my um, front edge into place, okay? Next week, what we'll do is we will do the um, sleeves, we will finish the hem, we will top stitch the, um, the facing in place, we'll put the pockets on, and we'll and I'll give you a buttonhole demo. So that's what we're gonna do next week. And just for now, let's, I'm gonna put this on my, my ditto form, just to check and see how we're doing. Okay, so my ditto form is a little bit bigger than my mom, so it's gonna be a, a little bit of a snug fit, but you'll be able to get the idea. Um, I'll just show you how this looks. I'll put her in here. Okay, so. All right, so you can see that the you know, the front neckline overlaps. Okay, but I think we're looking pretty good and the bottom edge matches up, so I'm happy with the hem. So that's where we are for the moment. Let's look at the back. There's my back. Of course, I have this sweater on underneath here, but you can see. Okay, so that's hanging nice and straight. Um, Again, this bust is a little bit bustier than my mom, but you can see that that's going to work out really nicely. And I can see down at the hem, my hems match up. So I'm happy with that. Um, yeah, so that's where we are. And um, I hope, let me just see here. Um, oh, Jane, Jane is saying good morning from New Zealand. I found a pale gray waffle weave in a thrift store to make my muslin out of not cut out yet. Ooh. Well, take your time cutting out your muslin because maybe it'll fit the first shot out and you can make yourself a lovely pale gray waffle bathrobe. That would be kind of cool. So, um, please keep me posted if anybody needs help. Um, so that's really it. I'm, I really thank you guys for hanging out with me for 
a whole hour and a half. Um, like I said, next week we will start with the sleeves and then we will set those in. We will finish the um, facing. We'll put the buttons on. We'll put the pockets on. So by the end of next That's It Friday, we should have a finished bathrobe. I'm kind of excited. Um, in the meantime, just um, as a reminder, and actually I haven't, I'm going to do a video for this, but I'm teaching pants fitting for stitches at home on December 5th and then the next weekend, the 12th, on the 12th. And the cool thing about this class is we're going to be working on picking out which pattern is for you because my happy pants pattern has three different slopers depending on where your full hip is. So we're going to spend the first class coming up with your sloper style and your size. And then I'm going to show you a variety of different um, adjustments that you may need. You know, and we'll try to identify those. Then during the week, between the first class and the second class, we're going to, um, you get a, you get a private Zoom fitting with me. So everybody gets their own fitting with me during the week, and it's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. And then the next, the next weekend on the 12th, we'll have two more classes to finish fine-tuning the fit of your muslin, and then making sure your pattern is ready to go to sew pants. So it's going to be a really wonderful opportunity if anybody is interested in making pants that fit. Um, I'll put a link to this class below. Um, and, you know, don't wait too long to register, though, because it already has a fair amount of students in it. I was kind of surprised when I got um, my numbers already. So, I mean, there's still space, but it is filling up, which makes me kind of excited. So if you're interested in, interested in joining me for that, please, um, you know, register for that. Or if you have questions, email me and I will help you. Um, all right, so, all right, so thank you, and thank you, oh, Diane said, very nice, this is fun, and Nil Gunn said, thank you so much, this was a very useful lesson for me. Oh, good, I'm glad that you let me know, because sometimes, I'll be honest, sometimes when I'm sewing um, projects from start to finish, and I'm sewing things that are very routine, like a side seam, or you know, something that's very, I don't know, boring to watch. I feel like I might be boring you. So I appreciate you letting me know that you did enjoy it and it was helpful. Um, but anyway, I mean, that's why I fused all my interfacing before I got on camera because I didn't want to spend half the class fusing interfacing. Um, but anyway, all right, I hope you guys have a great rest of your um, weekend because we're going to kick it off now. Um, and I'll see you next week for part three of the bathroom so long on Friday. Um, so thank you very much and I will see you next week.